good dirty. Then you would be after 30 years, I guess. So yeah, you've got these nice design features on here. You've got some nice elements on here. You can see where they've cut corners because this this is not real banding. This is just a paint job. Still sounds good. Now the frets are actually rusty. So we're going to have to get a bit hectic on that. But before I do, let's finish this off around our body so it's had a general clean. That's clean enough. Got all the grime off. Most of it anyway. I'm going to do something about those frets. I've got a little nylon sort of scourer and a little bit of dishwasher liquid and some water. Well, look at that. <laughs> How easy was that? Look. Can you see the difference? I bet you can't see it. This one is totally rusty and this one's clean as a whistle and just worth two wipes. Let's do the whole lot. I hope you can see the difference on this. Major, there's little bits of flecks of rust coming off on my hand. We could do with some more actually. Let's get the bulk of it off. Good enough. Frets are nicely done. There's a lot of uh, interesting stuff on this guitar. The edge of the fingerboard is rolled as well. These are all marks of people who actually knew what they were doing. So yeah, it might be cheap materials, but there's craftsmanship in this. See the difference? There you go. This neck, I've just noticed, I never noticed before, but this neck is actually concave. It's got a shape to it, like this. Never seen that before, except on scalloped guitars which seems to be all the rage at the moment. I've never seen that before. I've never noticed it before. I wasn't really paying much attention, I don't suppose. Now, I thought that that was rising, that bridge. But it's not. I'm going to shoot a bit of glue in there anyway. a little bit of pressure. Mm, it's got it. Got it. To get the, um, the dirt out of there and the grime, I'm just going to use some vegetable oil with a toothbrush. Just rub it like that. Simple. Okay, just a little bit of oil on the toothbrush. Rub it in. Make sure you give everything a little bit of a coating. The pegs as well. Look at that now, look. Look how easy that turns. Literally just a drop of oil. Look at that. Okay, now as you turn, the oil is being transferred to these cogs. That's one. And there's the other one. 
just a little touch of oil, literally just a little dab. Right, so that's it. The machine heads are fixed, working perfectly. Wipe your machine heads, get the excess oil off. Pop it in. Pop a screw in. This is where zero frets come into their own because you don't have to recut that slot every time you change the, the strings. You can put any gauge of string on it and this zero fret is zero. So that's where the strings all come across here and they touch this fret. So you don't need to keep adjusting every time you put new strings or change the gauge of the string. Okay, now this has uh, turned into quite a mission. This was a saddle that came out okay and this is the saddle that I bought to replace it now if I had the right saw I could probably cut this saddle in half maybe even four I could get four of these out of this anyway it was a risk trying this back in here it didn't work it was a bit of a nightmare so, I mean I'm not going to use that I'm not going to shave all that down just to get down to that little nub. That's nuts. So there's loads of plastic all over the world. We need to get rid of it and do something useful with it. I said to my wife, what can I use? What's about that big? And she went, because my wife's a genius, right? She said, a cotton bud. Genius, right? So I stuck a cotton bud in there. Can you see that? So now remember, this action was very low on this guitar with that little nub. I've cleaned it up, give it a bit of juice, a bit of uh, moisture. I did try this. I reversed it and I put it into the, I put it into the uh, bridge, but it didn't work. It was like buzzing like crazy. It was fret buzz and all kinds of nonsense going on. And uh, I thought, no, it needs a little bit more lo loft, little tiny bit more loft, and that's what that tip that cotton buds do it. Now I put this this E string on just to test it out and what I noticed was that there was a little bit of fret buzz on uh, where was it these three I had a bit of fret buzz there there and there so I got my trusty file from my wife <laughs> just filed them down a bit and here we are Let's just get it up to pitch and tension, see where we are. But it's not buzzing anymore, which is good. The strings are stretching, you've got to remember, they're new. This is new. Get in there. Oh. Wow, will you look at that? Pitch perfect. With a cotton bud. <laughs> no fret buzz, nothing. I'm super, super happy. There's a little bit of a buzz there. Oh, just me not fingering it properly. It's just me not playing it properly. Right, I'm gonna put the rest of these strings on. I mean, the thing about this that's really making me laugh about this cotton bud, is this is exactly what the kind of, thing, well, they wouldn't have had cotton buds, but if you was out on the road and you was like a blues player tramping up and down the highways and byways of the Delta in America, 
you didn't have the time to go to Alluvia, you didn't have the money to go to Alluvia, so you would fix the thing with whatever you had to hand, right? That's what you would do. So this is like really authentic stuff. I'm super chuffed about it. Plus, I'm recycling plastic, which is great. It's recyclable paper. Right, I don't like these. I mean, these, you know, I'm sure they're very good strings, but it doesn't tell you which one is which on here. So that would be very confusing for somebody. Oh, it's got the numbers on it. 521, 522, 523, okay. I'll let them off. But that wasn't very clear. Okay, remember, the old routine. Always remember when you're doing your your new strings, always have your tuner holes facing down the fretboard so you can go straight into them. Makes life so much easier. It equals the tension across the, across the uh, guitar. Okay, so we go in to the second post, if bend 90 degree angle, go under the string and come over the top so you get that locking sequence going on. I'll put the uh, string through here just temporarily so it doesn't go flying all over the place and then just tighten up. When I dress those frets, I dress them across the whole width of the fretboard. Well, that was easy. Okay, so we can take that out of there now, because we don't need that to be held anymore. Get our D string. You put your string through. Okay, give yourself a couple of inches. Like that. Right, 90 degree angle. Give it a bend, go underneath the string, then over the top like that. So what you're actually effectively doing is you're making a locking nut. You're making it, you're making a secure lock. Okay, can you see that? That goes through, at right 90 degrees angle underneath, over the top. I did explain that in another video, but I don't think I was very clear. Look at these tuners, how they're turning so easy. Brilliant. No fret buttons. How brilliant is that? We don't want to get too much pressure on these till we get the other side on, so let's get on with that. Ooh, black strings. How innovative is the G string? We come up, and this time we go through our post. Now, what way do you think we're going to go? We're going to go in again, under, and that's it. Hold it like that. So now. Lovely. Now, I just noticed when I was doing that, there's a bit of crud in that fret there, in that, there's a bit of crud in the nut. So I'm just gonna give that the old college try. Because you've got to remember, this fret does nothing other than guide the strings. It's not um, determining anything other than that. Look at that. Through the post. We go in, we go under. Pull over the top. Right, I'm going to tune it now. 
some kind of devilish tune that 